It's actually been quite spectacular how resilient the market has been. Hi, everyone. I'm Christine Copper with Sotheby's International Realty in Vancouver, Canada, and I'm putting together my September market update. All of the numbers that we're looking at are from the end of August. Now that we've completed that month, we get to take an in-depth look at what happened in August, where we're headed, and what's happened in the economy and the overall market in the meantime. As you know, every month I have the numbers I love to look at, especially with months of inventory. So let's get right to it. Okay, so here we are taking a look at the numbers for the Real Estate Board of Greater Vancouver uh, ending August 2023. So this covers everywhere from Maple Ridge all the way to Whistler for the Real Estate Board of Greater Vancouver. So it's somewhat of the Metro Vancouver area. We are looking at the overall activity in the marketplace to give us an insight as to what is the trend. We always need to look into your specific market and product type to really dig deeper and find out what's going in your neighborhood, your product specifically. If you want that information, please reach out to me. I'd be happy to put together this type of analysis for you and even more in depth for any of your situations that you're considering like buying or selling. So overall, we did 2,296 sales in August. Now that's down six and a half percent month over month from July. Not untypical considering that we are in the summer season and August is typically the slowest month of the summer because that's when everyone finally takes their holidays. So it's not unusual for there to be a little bit of a downtick from July. However, we did also see a couple of interest rate increases here, as you can see in June and July, which potentially had an impact on the sales in August. And when we take a look at year over year, it shows that this August was still very much more active than August of last year. If you recall last year, we had started to see the beginning of the interest rate increases. Almost every month we had an interest rate increase from the Bank of Canada. So things were really changing back then with a lot of fear in the marketplace, especially with inflation and where interest rates could potentially go. We are doing way better than we did last year at this time. And to put the sales into perspective, because we need to take these highs and these lows out of the market, we're August sales were about 14% below the 10 year average. So a little bit weaker, but that's also completely reasonable considering we're sitting at interest rates we haven't seen for over 10 years. So it's actually been quite spectacular how resilient the market has been. Most pundits would say that once we had all the steady interest rate increases, that would have a significant impact on the market. And it did actually from last fall, into the beginning of this year or even last summer into the beginning of this year. However, once interest rates kind of went on hold, everything took a breather, there's still a, a satiable demand for real estate and we had a spectacular spring with prices appreciating. Now, we take a look at the, the sales, which is the demand. How many people are out there looking to purchase a home at that point in time or successfully purchased a home? We, so we had 2,296 groups, but then we need to look at what is the supply side? How many homes are coming onto the market and how many homes are available overall for those people to buy? In terms of new supply coming on the market in the month of August, we had 3,943 new listings come on. That was down about 15% from July. Totally normal considering most people don't launch in August when a lot of people are on holidays. It's up considerably year over year. So there's 18% more listings came on in August of this year than they did last year. And in terms of a 10-year average, we're about 5% below the 10-year average for new listings to come on in August. Then we take a look at the overall inventory. So how many homes did these 2,200 buyers have to choose from when they were looking to purchase? And there's 10,000 82 homes on the MLS at the end of August. That's down 2% month over month, down 2% year over year. So there's not even as many listings this year as there were last year. And the amount of listings that we have are 13% a 10 year average. We are in historic lows of inventory in all product types across the board. And there's a lot of factors that are going into it, considering interest rates for people who own their homes right now, they probably don't want to make a move because in some cases they don't need to, in other cases, 
the mortgage that they have right now, if they can't port it, they're at the risk of losing that great rate that they might have. And of course, if they decided to make a change and move up and potentially have to increase their mortgage, they may not want to do that with the where current rates are today. There's something to be said about that, actually, because in terms of inventory, we have historic lows for a reason. Many sellers a, also don't have anywhere to go. There's not a lot of great inventory for them to buy. But it also speaks to the fact that when things change, there is an unsatiable demand. Do not think for one minute that all the buyers have disappeared because they're definitely there and there's actually a very active market going on right now. And there's a lot of people on the sidelines who could buy today, but choose not to. And of course, from affordability perspective, there are people who are getting pushed out of the market with these interest rate increases. But the second they can get in the market, you better believe it. People want to have security and they want to be able to own their own homes. You know, eventually they'll have them paid off regardless of the interest rate. That's something to keep in mind when we think about the overall market. Now, my favorite stat would be months of inventory, MOI, because months of inventory really helps us understand and is a great predictor of where things are headed. Between four and six months of inventory is considered a balanced market. Okay, so four to six months is a balanced market. Anything above above six months of inventory is more inventory than demand. And we all understand how supply and demand works. If there's more supply than there is demand, then there is downward pressure on prices because there's more inventory available than buyers want to purchase. And generally speaking, buyers want to get the better deal and therefore they're gonna want a better price and prices tend to come down. Below four months of inventory is considered a seller's market. And that is where there's just not enough inventory to meet the demand of the current marketplace. And that's where you start to see the multiple offers and prices increase and sellers being in the driver's seat, dictating the terms. Now we're sitting at 4.4 months of inventory. So technically this would be considered a balanced market. In my experience and in all all markets, whether it's stock markets, real estate markets, things happen quickly and they tend to happen in more extremes than they do sitting flat. What you can see is the trend. And it's been an interesting trend because at the beginning of the year, January, when it was dead and we had almost no sales, we had 7.3 months of inventory. That was a heavy buyer's market. The end of the trend, if you look at my market stats from 2022, you can see from about the middle of the year all the way down the MLS benchmark had negative pressure and it was in a downward trend. However, this was the last time we had an interest rate increase. And by the end of January, the Bank of Canada did indicate that they were considering a pause. But even before that happened, we started to see, I think that the reality of the situation had really kicked in for buyers and, and the marketplace. And a lot of buyers were ready to be active. And we started to see a lot of activity in the marketplace. And very quickly, while we were at 7.3 months of inventory, things started to tighten up and we got right down very quickly into a seller's market. And as you know, we've had an incredible spring, which has basically defied all odds. We've had price increases and amazing activity on listings, multiple offers, you name it. A lot of properties have really almost recovered to what they were at the peak of last year. We can never predict where things are going with this market. It's quite incredible. We were very much in a seller's market and slowly but surely as we started to see these interest rate increases again, we started to see this uptick. Now, of course, that was aligned with the summer season coming in and September and the fall market, the second market that we have each year, the strongest market of the year is coming into effect. Now, benchmark price coming back to months of inventory, we're sitting in this balanced market currently, and it'll be very interesting to see where things go in September. There's still activity going on out there. We still see multiple offers. We have clients that are working in the 1.3 to 1.5 million range where we've seen multiple offers. We've seen one bedroom, 600,000 condos under multiple offer. So there is a lot of activity out there. In fact, there was one property that was listed under a million dollars, severely under a million dollars that had 15 offers yesterday. It was obvious that it was severely under listed. So it was not market value. And it was a strategy that that seller decided to take. And it can work a strategy that can sometimes backfire. But in this case, definitely 
we got them to the offers that they were seeking. There is activity out there and there are people seeking to buy at this point in time. What does all of this have to do with benchmark price? Where are prices headed? Well, the interesting thing is our MLS benchmark price, which is just a benchmark kind of giving you an overall gauge is sitting at 1.208 million. It's red because it means it went down from the month before. It went down about 0.2% month over month, but it's still up year over year 2.5% which is pretty spectacular considering what we have gone through in terms of the economic environment with inflation and interest rates, et cetera. And an interesting thing to note from the beginning of this year, prices are up 9% on the benchmark price. Anyone that was thinking that they were going to maybe get a better deal, well, things have gone up about 9%. Timing is a thing and nobody can predict it. You know, if you're thinking about buying or selling, it it's just depends on what's right for you. I'd be happy to chat with you about that at any time, just let me know what what your thoughts are. We're going to take a look at each individual product type, detached townhome and condo and see where they are. So this is a graph from the Real Estate Board of Greater Vancouver and it breaks down. Here's your detached pricing. This is what happened in the last year or so. And you can see very much that prices have recovered astronomically. It's pretty incredible how resilient the market has been. Here's your townhome prices and here's your condo prices. It's an interesting thing to see how well the market has hung in there. And really part of that is not only the demand, but the inventory levels of what we have out there. There's just not a lot of inventory for the demand and it is propping up the prices and keeping them where they're at. In August, we're taking a look at Metro Vancouver here and we're going to take a look at those numbers. We had detached homes. We had 591 sales month over month, just waiting to hear the um, final sale price after the home buyer's rescission period today to see where that landed. That's a 13.2% decrease in sales. Pardon me, that's a typo, but sales are up 13.2% year over year. And your benchmark price is sitting at about $2 million for a detached home in the Metro Vancouver area. I always like to keep an eye on what the peak was and that we hit about 2.139 in the peak, but this today's price is a 0.3% increase month over month for detached houses and up 3.3% year over year. Attached townhomes in Metro Vancouver, 422 sales. That's down 9.4% month over month and up almost 19% year over year with a benchmark price of about 1.1 million. Now our peak was 1.15. And so today's price is almost 4% above last month's price and down just 0.1% year over year, interestingly. And attached condos had 1,270 sales. It's down almost a percent from last month, up 27% year over year and sitting at a benchmark price of 770,000. The benchmark at the peak was 844, so still down a bit from there, but definitely we've improved substantially. And month over month, prices are just down 0.2% and up 4.4% year over year. Feels like things are starting to catch up to one another and potentially flattening out here. We're going to just take a quick look and break down Vancouver West versus Vancouver East because the prices there are also substantially different, except for in the townhouse market, which is very interesting. So detached homes, there was 69 sales in August. That was flat month over month. Sales are up 21% year over year. And your benchmark price is $4 million or almost $4.1 million for a detached home in Vancouver West. Attached condos, 45 sales last month. That was over 2% month over month. And sales are up almost 10% year over year with a benchmark price of about $1.5 million for a townhouse in Vancouver West. Attached condos, 319 sales. So just down almost 2% month over month with sales being 13% year over year and your benchmark price being 830,000. Taking a look at Vancouver East, we had 80 sales last month. Sales were down almost about 11% month over month, but up 40% year over year with a benchmark price at 1.950. Drastic difference if you're going to be buying a detached home on uh, Vancouver's east side versus west side. Attached townhomes, so 43 sales, that's down about 
37% month over month and down 18% year over year. So big difference on the east side of Vancouver and you're sitting about 1.479 for a benchmark price for a townhome there. Obviously these are global numbers. If you have brand new product, they're going to be more. If you have older product, they're going to be less. Condos, 127 sales, flat month over month, up 48% year over year in terms of sales and sitting at a benchmark price of 678,000. So again, big differences here between the condos and the detached benchmark price between east side and west side. What's driving the market? Well, consumer confidence is a big part of it. It is shifting in some cases. People have been doing really well. There's been a lot of demand and you've got a couple of different drivers in that sense. You have people who want to have home ownership. Being in the rental market right now is insane. We had one of our units come up for rent. We had over 200 applicants. The demand in the affordable levels is insatiable. And currently it is a very, very tight market. There's been a lot of pressure on them because of course all those would-be homeowners with increased interest rates are now going back and staying in the rental market, creating a lot of pressure there. So you, you have that demand. We do see the multiple offers, like I mentioned in the condo and townhouse space. And of course, any property that is well marketed and presents well will definitely attract some attention. However, there is starting to be a little bit of a shift. We're seeing lower retail sales. We are starting to hear about those job layoffs. So there could be a little bit of a shift coming here into the fall market. We shall see. But of course, all that's doing is delaying the demand for when things are either better or more affordable. Inflation was really, really hot. It started to cool down during the spring, thus the hold earlier in the year for interest rates. And then unfortunately we had a blip and there was increased inflation. So then we had the couple of interest rate increases over the summer and hopefully that's going to ease off as we head into the fall market. GDP recently, right before the September 6th interest rate announcement came in lower than economists had expected. And I think that is what's got the Bank of Canada concerned because they're starting to see some cracks, so to speak, in economic activity. Things aren't as great as perhaps perceived. And so they put a pause on those interest rates. And of course, just because they pause doesn't mean that that's not going to impact uh, people even further because, of course, there are a lot of homeowners whose mortgages are going to be renewing in later 2023, 2024, and 2025. So a lot of these interest rate increases still need to work through the economy and will impact people's spending. As we know, some people's mortgages, if you've been on a variable rate, in some cases have practically doubled. So imagine your $3,000 mortgage going to $6,000. You know, that's another risk having more people in the rental market as well. While some aspects market participants would like to see a significant impact on prices. Of course, that is also the cost of some people losing their homes and also coming back into the rental market, which then just puts even more pressure on the rental market. It's always a double-edged sword, of course, in terms of what happens in those cases. So let's see what happens. Hopefully we do have this soft landing in the economy and we don't experience a severe recession. And of course, interest rates and affordability rates went, were held here in September. Now remember, interest rates, when they're set by the Bank of Canada, that's the prime rate and it only impacts variable mortgages. It doesn't end things like your line of credit, et cetera. The Bank of Canada and the prime rate does not impact fixed mortgage rates. So Fixed mortgage rates are impacted by the bond market, and the bond market basically tries to predict whether we're going into a recession or not. The bond market indicated that they didn't think that we were heading into a recession anytime soon, especially when we were getting increased inflation numbers. And so fixed interest rates have skyrocketed as well. And so there's been a, a lot of movement in the fixed market. What's been interesting is how volatile it can be, because at one point in time in the spring, you know, it dropped down to below 5%, which I think anyone today would be extremely pleased to be locking in a rate under 5% because you're probably looking at 6 to 7% for any kind of mortgage product, whether variable or fixed. So it, it will be interesting to see what happens here as more economic data comes out into the fall market. And perhaps those fixed rates will taper off, especially if there are signs of a weakening economy. It also means that people are 
are spending less money, which then means that companies aren't going to do as well. And then that means that they potentially lay off and then the people who would have bought could have maybe lost their jobs. So there's a little bit of a delayed thing going on there, but hopefully the bond market cools off a little bit and we get some better interest rates in the nearer to midterm. I think, I think the market has now accepted the fact that we're not going to be seeing interest rate decreases as fast as some market participants had expected especially with the uptick in inflation, like we really need to get that under control. And that's the government's job. And that's their number one mandate. If it was me, I would anticipate having these interest rates at these levels higher for longer, with eventual tapering off into a more normalized range, not emergency rate ranges underneath 3%, maybe closer to the four and even 5% range. And of course, the overall theme here, what's working with all of this is inventory and the affordability. So inventory, we do have historic lows. So again, it's creating that cushion on pricing. It's partly what has also helped prices increase over the spring market. It continues to remain the same. It has uptick slightly overall, but it's also still low in the historic context of things. If you're thinking about buying or selling, we welcome the opportunity to connect with you. And of course, if you have any suggestions for our market update videos, we'd love to hear from you so we can get them into next month's. I'm Christine Copper with Sotheby's Realty in Vancouver, BC. Make sure that you like my YouTube channel and subscribe to my monthly newsletter. And I look forward to connecting with you. Take care for now.